Master Your Mindset Radio, Episode 18. Welcome to Master Your Mindset Radio, the show where we empower you to conquer limiting beliefs and transform your world with your gifting and purpose. Now for your host, Elizabeth Nader. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Master Your Mindset Radio. I'm really excited today. I'm online with the UK, actually, so you might hear a little bit of... uh, not feedback, but static, I guess, uh, is what you may call it. But that's because we're having a cross-Atlantic conversation. So I'm really, really excited to introduce you guys to Dr. Shelley James. She's online with me now. Can you hear me, Shelley? I can. Hello. Welcome. It's great to be- really excited to have you. Um, I have been talking to you back and forth for a while now and was so pleased to be a part of your Uh, Power Through Transition Summit that is still ongoing online, and we've been talking to our group about that. But um, I know in some short conversations we've had, you've had kind of an amazing journey, and I thought it would be fascinating for our group to learn about you, to learn about your experience, and what it is that you know and understand about the power of the mind and the ability to heal it and change it and all those things that we talk about in mindset. So Shelley, welcome and give us some background on who you are. Okay, well, it really is a great pleasure to to be with you. Thank you so much for the invitation to the conversation. Um, I suppose I've spent a lot of my life in transition. I was born in Jamaica. I spent my early years traveling around. Um, my home life was really not comfortable or happy at all, so I ran away from home when I was 18 um, and I just kind of uh, managed my mind, I guess, through some quite hairy situations. Um, but uh, I had an amazing career in corporate identity, so I worked with all kinds of large brands looking at how they can communicate and how they can, um, I suppose, manage their mindset and express that through design, whether it be through packaging or through environments or through different sorts of interfaces. But my own particular encounter with the plasticity of my own brain came when I had a really couple of serious head injuries. I mean, I'd been under massive stress at work for a while and and in a relationship and um, I fell off my bike and twice actually in a row. Uh, Each the first time I got up and thought I'm fine. And the second time really I clearly wasn't fine. And my brain had got shaken up so badly inside its little cage, bony cage that um, essentially the the membrane, the, the a, a particular virus crossed the blood-brain barrier um, and I fell into, um, I had a really bad um, fever for a few days and essentially I after that I, I got something called chronic fatigue syndrome or and otherwise known as ME. There are lots of different ways of describing that but essentially my central nervous system just pretty much packed up. I couldn't really cope with um, sort of multiple stimulus. So for example, we're used to um, in a room, there might be somebody moving around, there might be someone talking, there might be a car going by. And our brains are amazing at filtering out that stuff. And I know that in mindset, it's really interesting to work out what we're filtering out and what we're choosing to notice. Mm. But at a very simple sensory level, I couldn't cope with music with several instruments. Actually, to start with, I really couldn't cope with light coming through a window or kind of being in a shower with soap. You know, just all those sort of things that you just don't think about as being complex sensory situations, I just found absolutely exhausting. So there were lots of different narratives about what had happened. Some people said, oh, well, you haven't had kids and, you know, you're, it's, it's the toxins coming out, you need to kind of fast and sort of a lot of different kinds of narratives about what was happening and luckily my partner at the time was a passionate sort of scientist really um evolutionary biologist and he took me along to a neurologist and because the other i tried a number of these techniques and they just they really just didn't work i thought they would and they didn't so um this guy just took me on essentially an intensive mind management, time management program, which involves starting absolutely from scratch and noticing really in sort of five minute chunks through my day, what my energy levels were, the things which made me feel 
tired of things which helped me to feel more resourceful, um, the foods that worked, the foods that didn't work, and I set up a program. It took me three and a half, four years. It actually took me five years before I was fully, I kind of was able to really function properly again. But essentially, um, we went, I, I sort of chunked out my day into 20 minute slots and half an hour rest periods. And over a week, I would do what I could cope with. So I might get up uh, and sort of actually physically get out of bed and then sit down. And that would be one period. And I, then I'd have a rest. Wow. Um, so little by little, um, I introduced, I sort of got up, got dressed, got up, got dressed, went outside, got up, got dressed, went outside, said hello to somebody. And it just kind of built it up slowly like that. Um, and essentially, I realized that by by becoming acutely aware of the things which um, my brain found tiring, the things which my brain found um, restful or sort of resourcing, I could rebuild how all that stuff worked and we're slowly able to manage that so I'm now sitting in a room with cars going by um, video having a conversation there are a number of things going on in the room now which I really couldn't have coped with before so I mean there was the kind of managing my my kind of my brain uh, which I slowly got better at but then there was also I suppose managing my mind in the sense of um, it being quite depressing I mean I couldn't have kids anymore. Um, I watched my friends get married. You know, all kinds of things happened, which um, it was quite e it was going to be easy to sort of slip into depression, really, because I felt as if life was passing me by. Sure. But um, I guess the thing that I found really useful, uh, and I continue to find it very useful, is that by setting small goals and and kind of and just kind of stepping slowly towards them even when sometimes the bigger picture felt very difficult, I was able to kind of focus on those small wins. And little by little, as like grains of sand, they grew into um, my life today, which is, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm swim a mile most days, I go ballroom dancing, I wow. manage quite a complex um, kind of creative practice working with scientists. I've trained, I've done a PhD, I've trained as an electrician. So I, I'm kind of just hungry for, for all the things that my brain and my body allow me to do, having noticed what it's like when it can't. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, you just said something that is so interesting because part of your healing process was to set small goals and to achieve those and then add to that and really bring it in instead of just always be looking at the big picture is trying to bite off little things. And in some ways, I think, you know, whether or not you have a traumatic brain injury or not, this is a way for us to get to our to our end goal is to say, what do I do today? What can I do now? And when we have chaos in our life, when we have stress, when we have sort of this overwhelming, I don't know what to do next, which I know all of us face. I know everybody listening has those days where you just don't know which way to turn. I don't care how organized you are, how focused you are. And the idea that, that the brain reacts so well to saying, all right, in chaos, in confusion, in all of this, let's, let's take it down to small things. What can we do? What can we achieve right now? And then what do we do next? And that there's this success mechanism that I'm sure you know all about that I think the brain just reacts to and starts to heal from. Now, you had an injury or a consecutive injuries. You had something that most of us, God willing, are not going to go through where, where literally you're bedridden. I mean, it's what you're describing, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so even so, though, the, the idea that the brain can be retrained, talk about that as it relates to just even negative thinking or patterns of toxic thoughts because you know you might be listening to this and say well if I haven't had a brain injury what's the no we're still talking about the power of the brain to recreate itself so what have you what have you learned from that that is applicable to how you think mm. I suppose what, what I what I learned is that well oddly enough actually a, a brain injury or sort of a traumatic situation is almost a gift because you just have no choice actually um, you know, you just, you look fine physically, but actually you, you, you just, 
you really got to reboot. There's there's no you know there's no option. Whereas I think for for years before that, I was probably in a similar state of overwhelm and confusion, but actually didn't have the um, have the clarity or the kind of dramatic situation to give me permission to really address it in the way that I had to. So I think that you can see those moments of of of, of sort of traumatic transition as as a gift to have to, because you have to start from zero. And a lot of us spend a lot of our time in in a kind of twilight zone. So um, I guess that that would be my encouragement is, is for people to sort of realise that there is a kind of urgency about addressing how you behave now because even though it may not look dramatic or traumatic it you may there may be things that you that that um that are just as kind of um undermining to your potential and and your and your delight really um in your life right now so you you know in your childhood you quickly described having a challenging childhood right yeah and so that sets you up i i would guess for for anyone that's had that with limiting beliefs and challenges that you had to overcome. And what I hear you saying is that the gift in the injury was the forcing you, at the aspect that forced you to slow down and rebuild. And in fact, because many people don't have that, they're walking around with these limiting beliefs, with these experiences that have, have uh, ingrained in them uh, negativity or things that hold them back, and they've never been forced to face it. And so there's an urgency in there to say, don't wait for the, the incident. Don't wait for what happened to you. Don't ignore the fact that the time is now, but you were given almost the gift of saying, you have to slow down, Shelley, and you have to deal with these things. I mean, that's certainly what, um, that, that's, how I, that's how I experienced that situation for myself. And I mean, I, because I'm going through some, I'm, I'm kind of right on the edge of my transition edge right now, um, your the conversation that we had about um, faith and fear has been something that's been a guiding light for me because as you, I think you said is is when it's when you're scared is when those limiting beliefs come up and that's it's only then when the real work starts as long as you are in a kind of an envelope of of, of certainty and comfort um, you, you don't know what you don't know but when you start to um, shift outside that I mean I'm kind of currently training for something physically and it's like oh god you know maybe may, may I better get sick again but I, I'm also kind of challenging that and it's um it's it, it's in those moments of fear that the that those limiting beliefs become they can they have to because they're the ones that are going to stop you from keeping on going absolutely that's right so you go through this and physically you're very challenged mentally you're very challenged you're learning the power of the brain which I can't say enough to, about to people is that I I, I just think it's a, it's just such a fascinating thing that we have and we just don't understand his power. And you've been able to shift through that. And now I want you to explain to people as best as we can understand, because I'm telling you, it's over my head what it is that you do for, for a living. What is it that you do? I know you're getting into uh, helping the world with, and we're going to talk about that with, you know, your experiences, but in terms of what you've been doing with your hands and your brain creatively mm -hmm. and in the scientific realm is how I see it. Can you explain that to us so we can understand? This is miraculous to me, what you've been doing, considering what you've been through. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I've been working in visual identity, so brands and um, looking at designing things that attract the eye and that encourage people to believe things about an organization because of very simple tweaks to color and shape and texture. Um, and after this brain meltdown, really, I realized I had no idea how the eye and the brain work together. So I started to work, it's, I mean, I suppose it's very similar to mindset. We, most of what we experience is an illusion. We, about 70% of what we see in the world is something that we expect. Mm. Only 30%, and that's, you know, and that's on a good day, only about 30% is new information. So we kind of resort to a default because it's so much easier, really. Um, you kind of see an oval and it's kind of in a kitchen. You think that's probably the top of a cup. But so what I started to do was, but actually it could be many, many other different things. So I, I started to work with the Bristol Eye Hospital. Um, on the, so I became artist in residence. I have an ongoing residency there and started to make work in glass because glass is the most brilliant way of um, creating it. The brain doesn't know what to do with glass. It's transparent, but it's solid. 
you can create all sorts of amazing optical illusions using glass. So um, I started to experiment with glass to create optical illusions and trick the brain and then work with the, with the surgeons and then with psychologists and I still work with, with the team of psychologists to create optical illusions which um, help scientists to understand how the brain normally works because if you can trick the brain you can um, learn things about the sorts of assumptions that the brain makes. So um, that's so I, I, I developed some techniques for putting prints, sort of suspending patterns inside glass or cutting glass um, to create angles which create spaces which are both sort of there and not there and um, sets of patterns which create illusions of depth and movement which you can then get somebody to walk across um, a giant panel of glass which has got an illusion embedded in it and someone is absolutely convinced, I mean it's safe because it's 10 centimetres deep, but someone's convinced that it's 60 centimetres deep. Mm. Wow. And you can actually begin to change where they put their feet by adjusting the illusion. And you're not asking them to say what they think at all, you can just, you, you just see how they behave differently. And so it's just a powerful example of how a lot of the things that your body does, including your kind of autonomic nervous, nervous system, I mean, your flight and flight response, are, is governed by forms of perception that we really aren't capable of articulating. That's so, amazing. Uh, you know what you just made me think of? That bridge, I think it's in Japan or China, that's glass. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't recall exactly where it is, but I, I believe it's one of those two places. And people, it's over a great cavern and mm -hmm. people are asked to walk across it and they're literally crawling across this thing because it's it's see-through however it appears to them even though it's solid and it and it's yeah. structurally sound it actually when i think about it shelly i get that feeling in my hands like like that nervousness of crawling like i i there were people crawling across this thing because their brain is telling them danger right and they had to relearn that no 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 this is okay but there's so many different inputs coming in and yeah. it's tricking the brain one way or the other or you try to trick the brain to say it's okay because the brain is saying no this is not okay you're going to fall in this you know in this hole and and perish so i mean it reminds me on a very simple level of that mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. is what you're doing helping in in the medical field is that then helping people with brain issues so um, a couple of things spring to mind from what you're saying. I mean, one of them is the, the power of the sorts of things that you do is that there are, that we all have our kind of glass bridges, really. Uh, and, good. Uh, oh, I love that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. you know, so so um, our brain is kind of, it's doing a good job saying, look, it's really not okay to walk over there. But sometimes it's it's useful to go over there and the the, the original experiments that I did with, on walking um, actually that was partly because I, I fell over and, and broke my ankle really badly <laughs> it mm. seemed, seemed really accident prone but each time I something happens I kind of make a new piece of work from it yeah. um, but what was interesting I was suddenly realizing that I had no idea you don't know where you put your feet but what was it, the, the, the these experiments grew up from some early work with psychologists um, working with children on attachment and so um, if you, if a mother stands, or a, a parent, a caring parent stands on one on the other side of something which seems dangerous to the child, but the, if the parent on the other side says, "Come on, it's going to be fine," um, and there is a good bond, a good level of trust between the child and the adult, then the child will overcome its anxiety and move towards its carer. So it just shows me the power of a coach or a guide. Um, a trusted guide to say, um, here's a glass bridge for me, it, it, it may be fine to you, but it's a glass bridge to me. And um, you place that person that you, that you have faith in on the other side of that bridge and ask them to help you across that. And oh my gosh, I love that. And it's also that person has already crossed. So this is the thing in life, and this is really where I perceive where you're at, is you've crossed a bridge already. And we really look to people, I think it's so powerful when we can find someone who's been where we've been and is on the other side of it and says, it's okay. And it's not that that person doesn't have their own bridges to cross because we do that, you know, until the day we are, we are really done with our purpose here. But, but to be able to look to someone that says, I've been there, I crossed over it, it's okay come on, take that first step, is really what purpose is, is helping other people. So you 
having gone through all of this, Shelley, having gone through the pain of it, the fear of it, I, I, I can't imagine the fear of what am I going to do? My, my brain isn't working right. I, I can't interact. I can't, the, 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 the smallness that your world became to now you're able now reaching out to help others. Isn't that really where you're at now having crossed that glass bridge and looking back and, and extending your hand to others? That, that's exactly where I feel as if I am um, with all humility. I mean, I suppose, as you say, there's, I'm, I, the next bridge is coming up, but I, but, I, but I see around me people for whom this bridge is one they um, they want to cross, but they're not quite sure how. And I think all we can do in, in the world is to kind of be be the light ahead of people um, and, and look for lights ahead of us so that we're aware of being in a, in a, long, a long line of people for, who kind of just, who offer, who offer a path forwards um, without kind of, in, in complete sort of generosity, really, without necessarily being any kind of a transaction, simply um, knowing that I'm so much happier and more peaceful now than I was when I before I crossed over that bridge. That I that I truly believe that it's it, that it's a that it's a journey worth taking. Yeah, exactly. And it's a, it's a journey worth retelling, and it's a journey worth sharing because there's so much about it that can help someone else and. That is why, you know, we are not, I believe, each of us, we're not made for everyone, but we're made for a group of people. And to find those people and have those people find you is where the fulfillment comes in. So I, I think you're on the precipice of something with this that will mm. truly heal people. And I know that you're working through that now. What does that mean? You know, you know that it's about transition. You know it's about reaching people who are looking for what's next. Where you are today, can you describe a little bit about where you think you might be headed so people can start to understand how ultimately uh, getting closer to you and your words of wisdom and, and your life's work as it starts to evolve, how they, how they might be able to connect with that? Oh, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be proud to. I suppose um, where I've got to now, I suppose I'm, I'm finding myself um, drawing a tribe of people who have had sort of unconventional lives because... The choices that I made and this, the, the, the years that I spent recovering really have meant that um, a lot of the, I suppose, standard accomplishments of sort of children and, and those sorts of things haven't, haven't been in, aren't in my life. Mm. Uh, but I also am finding myself with all kinds of other wisdom and riches and, and energy that, um, that, that, that seems to have resonance for other people. So I'm set up. I, I guess I've, I've also continued to um, take, I've just retrained as an, I'm working an electrician, I'm working with all kinds of people on helping them to be, I suppose particularly creative people, on helping them to be more um, confident in finding their own voice and using light to do that. So where I've got to is I've put together this summit talking to all kinds of different people about the power, about what it takes to be to feel power in your transition. So whether it's to be to do with thinking again about your attitudes to money, managing your mind, how you deal with your body, and finding that that has all kinds of resonance with people who are who had unconventional lives and are in transition themselves. And I suppose I've had transitions both in terms of kind of recovering from health, recovering from different family issues, um, shifting my career view, shifting countries, and so I'm finding that I've I've got some wisdom. I've crossed a few glass bridges, um, <laughs> and uh, and finding myself in a position to support other people to cross, I suppose, to spot the glass bridges they didn't know they were on, and um, help them to cross um, using, I suppose, my own techniques, which involve, I suppose keeping on being curious and being a tourist in my own life, which I'm finding seems to have resonance for other people. So if anybody would like to, to kind of follow me on and sort of join me on this journey, then, then that would be a complete, a complete pleasure and honor. Yeah, I love that. And you know, it's unconventional lives, but I've also found that the transition that happens when you go from one season to the next, it mm. maybe, maybe you've lived what would be considered by someone a conventional life, made conventional decisions. But one day you wake up and you realize you're in transition. And a lot mm. of times you don't know who you are and you don't know what you've become. 
And so uh, it's not always even the choice of what's unconventional as it is maybe not even making choices. Some people just go through life on autopilot and find themselves wherever they find themselves and realize they need to start to aggressively reach for their purpose, which perhaps they haven't done yet. And that is transition. And so I, I, I think you're well suited to uh, help people with that, to coach people with that. I, I know you're in the beginning stages of it, um, but I think people will be so fascinated by your work, by what you do. Is there a way, is it through the, maybe tr the transformation summit, transition summit where they can, they can go to that website and, and give their email or is there a better way for them to stay in touch with you? Probably the, be the best way is um, my, is through Shelly James. If they write to me, it's Shelly at shellyjames.co.uk. Okay. Um, there's a website there with my glass work. Um, there is the power through transition um, dot com web page as well, um, but I'm still learning the techniques for that. Uh, my my own um, professional glass website is is much better manned or womaned, so <laughs> that's the, the best way to get in touch. And I'd really be delighted to hear from anybody who'd like to find out more. Well, we'll definitely keep in touch. Uh, you and I will keep in touch, and I'm excited to see where you go with everything and what you can share as your uh, purpose, as it's unfolding now, starts to mature and and change and, and come out of all of this challenge that you've had, which you're turning really um, beauty from ashes. And everyone needs to, to hear that and learn from that because ultimately that is the redemptive power that that is in life that, that we all need to hold on to. So I, I applaud you for the hard work. Um, I can't imagine what you've been through and how you've pulled yourself from it, but I'm excited to be further confirmed that my brain has the kind of power that you've proven, healing power, um, ability to change, transform, ability to lead me to the, to the next place, and uh, just the power that we've been given in that is pretty amazing so i give you a lot of credit and i will always credit you with the glass bridge so that was a ma <laughs> that that was a mastermind moment shelly where you and i did that whole thing that was unplanned everybody i loved it now i'm going to use that ad nauseum <laughs> please do please do i've i've been using your fear and faith um obviously recognizing kind of humbly recognizing the the, the the source of all this because you've crossed bridges that i haven't crossed yet and i didn't even know i was on one so um i feel as if i'm i'm a follower in my way too well vice versa i love it and i've i've loved talking to you promise me you'll come back keep in touch with us like i know you're part of the facebook community and you're free to give us an update on what you're doing in there uh you know people like to learn from other people and that community is really there to create an environment for all of us to share with each other and so i welcome you know you doing that as well as other people because um, we all have such value to add and we're all meant to invest in each other so i hope you'll continue to keep us updated in that i'm going to be watching the rest of the summit and um you're replaying the videos at the end of the month we certainly are yes i think we think we've got 72 hours at the end so from the 30th of december they're all so, so good they're all oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it Thank no you it's so just each person is so different from the other and it's such a confirmation that we're all so unique. I, I've really enjoyed it and I give you a lot of credit for doing the work and the effort to pull all of these gifts together. I, I think that's been fabulous. It's been great. And I've been hearing from other people, they've really enjoyed it. Oh, that's great. That, that's, that, that's, 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 such, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm just so aware of the things that I want to do better. So I'm getting ready to do my next one. So, uh, so thank you so much for the feedback. That's 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 lovely to hear. Thank you. Well, keep a surprise of the next one. And guys, I know you appreciate Shelley's experience. Go check out her website. Uh, I really think that you'll be amazed by the work that she does. Um, she's got a creative brain that I don't have. I don't. That's not where I flow, Shelley. I just don't. And I'm always amazed when people can do the things that they can do and what you've been through. So I appreciate your time today. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss interviews like this. You don't miss other short encouraging messages out every Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Eastern. Follow Shelly, see what she's doing. Join the Facebook community because actually she's there. So it's a direct connection to Shelly and her work. And, um, you know, definitely we'll be in touch later, Shelly. And I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's really been a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Great. Talk to you soon. 
Thank you for listening to Master Your Mindset Radio. Before you go, if you want to be part of a free online community of like-minded individuals for support, resources, and inspiration as you conquer your limiting beliefs and pursue your purpose, go to elizabethnader.com slash community. That's elizabethnader.com slash community. Or search for Master Your Mindset Academy private group on Facebook. Looking forward to seeing you online.